So I was gonna make an intro where I was gonna try and rap and say I've got 99 problems and <laughs> Intel Arc drivers are pretty much all those problems, but I can't pull off a rap voice, guys, so I do apologize in advance. But today we are going to talk about the Arc A750 8 gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte A770 models that are out there in the wild. I've been comparing them in recent Gravis card comparisons here against Nvidia and AMD's offerings. However, every time I mention one of these GPUs, I do put out a disclaimer and say, you've gotta be careful with these GPUs. And in today's video, I'm going to describe all the reasons why you have to be careful before you buy an Intel Arc GPU, where your experience, if you get one of these cards, could range from some of the best price performance you've ever seen when buying a new GPU, all the way down to this is the worst experience I've ever had in my life on PC gaming. Let's start, for instance, with the first problem. And I've got a massive list of problems here to go through that are either crashes or bugs that need fixing or software improvements. But we'll start off with the first, vertical desyncing or vertical screen tearing. I've never seen this in my life when playing games, but sure enough, it propped up in Diablo 4 when I was playing one time after booting my PC up. The next here is 4K gaming. In Diablo 4, I had to scrap the 4K gaming benchmarks. In today's video, the cursor was just disappearing straight up at 4K gaming. And this was a replicable thing in this game, so it needs fixing. But let's look at all the other problems as well as those benchmarks right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon. BFTYC. Links in description below. So before we get on with the rest of these problems, let's get on with the gaming benchmark numbers here. We've got five different games, and the good thing is here about Intel is they're constantly updating their drivers. And I saw improvements, big improvements in F1 2022, which we'll show you here at both 1080p and 1440p, as opposed to the previous drivers, which I only tested literally like a week ago. You can see there is a massive uplift in this title. So when they do start optimizing the drivers and they get it right, you can see some big performance uplifts that make it so that it looks like it's a really good purchase. The one to Diablo 4, this is the second game that saw a performance uplift and we got here a little bit of a boost here, which was pretty good at 1080p and 1440p. Made the card look a lot more competitive in this title. The one to Hogwarts Legacy, 1080p and 1440p, it's still pretty much a miss on both these resolutions in terms of performance for your dollar here, especially versus the other cards. And then Cyberpunk 2077, it's still roughly the same performance, at least with the Arc A750. Adding the Arc A770 into the mix here, saw the 1440p numbers, get some chart topping numbers in this particular benchmark. And also throwing in the ray tracing numbers here, the Arc cards are pretty much middle of the pack. The last game that we're going to see here is going to feed back in to the problems when we talk about the drivers and the games themselves. And this is The Last of Us, where in my review of the RTX 4060, I showed that the Arc A750 8 gigabyte was doing extremely poor at 1080p and 1440p. And this was replicable even with the latest beta drivers and also the latest game updates. And so what I found here was when I installed the Arc A770 was we got much better performance. And this was at 1080p and 1440p, even though the performance wasn't good versus the AMD and Nvidia competitor cards, it was still a lot better than the eight gigabyte model. And then when I put the eight gigabyte model back in to retest, I just quickly dropped the settings down to low and sure enough, the game started running a lot smoother and then somewhere at the medium setting preset, it started to tank out again, meaning that this is pretty much a VRAM problem for the Arc A750 and The Last of Us, meaning if I were to hazard a guess, Intel have the worst memory compression out of the three graphics card competitors. In other words, if they've all got eight gigabytes of VRAM, Nvidia and AMD can utilize it better than can Intel, at least from what we're seeing with this benchmark. Let's get back to the issues here with the Arc, and I'm gonna say drivers because I feel like it's mainly driver issues that's affecting this card. Though let's look at the power consumption here. The numbers which will show up on the screen, the reporting is all over the place here. As you can see with the at the wall figures, the Arc cards are performing down the bottom of the charts. Then the software figures, 
they're kind of doing really well, which shows us that the direct figures here in the software is pretty much under-reporting the power consumption all the time. And depending on the game, it can show me 140 watts, and then some games it'll show me 180 watts, and then it's still performing the same. It's the gra graphics card's maxed. And I know from the other AMD and Nvidia cards that the performance between these two games or different games that I'm testing, the wattage from the GPU and the wall is pretty similar. So it shows you that the software reporting is buggy on the Intel Arc GPUs. And then we move on to the next one, really important, and that is alt tabbing causes cra uh, games to crash. Just when you say you've got a alt tab to a browser, you're looking at a map that's gonna guide you in Diablo 4, for example, on where to go and how to fi finish a quest, you alt tab and the game just crashes. And so this goes hand in hand as well with another problem, and that is that the screen capture has no hotkey in the driver set. So you can uh, hotkey essentially your highlights, which is supported in a number of games, but if you wanna manually do screen capture, then there's no hotkey for that. So you have to alt tab to start the screen capture, and if you alt tab, the game can crash. And it's honestly, these two things in conjunction with one another, it makes it sometimes unbearable to use an Arc GPU. And then we go on to screen capture. We've got forced HDCP or forced high definition content protection. There's no option in the drivers to turn this off either. Means you cannot use a capture card or record a BIOS screen. Now, if there was a software option, it would mean that you just can't uh, record your BIOS. You could record all your games and stuff once you've installed Windows but that's not the option on either. So it's forced here, you can't turn it off. I'd like to see this option uh, enabled at least in the driver set because I've tried this with two different capture cards here at the studio, one that I use for my camera and then another that I use for recording games and it both uh, display this message here. So I'd like to see that fixed. The back to games crashing here is where if I'm randomly playing games, sometimes they'll just crash without me alt tabbing or doing anything else. Uh, and then also games wouldn't boot sometimes, they display error messages. And in the case of Cyberpunk, I think one time that was just looping while it was trying to boot up. So there was some sort of issue there too. Then we get on to what I'm noticing is a buggy HDMI driver port, especially with 4K OLEDs, it'll just cut out. And the HDMI cable is absolutely fine. Tested this with the AMD and Nvidia GPUs here, and it works absolutely fine. I've tested another HDMI cable, so it's actually, I believe, the port or the driver set. I can't figure it out because DisplayPort from the Intel R card works absolutely fine with the 4K OLED. It's just the HDMI port that constantly cuts out, and it doesn't matter if it's 60 hertz or 120 hertz, it just seems to constantly cut out with the 4K OLEDs. So that's the first list that we got out of the way there with the bugs and everything that I found that was just really not working properly with the Arc A750 as well as the Arc A770. Next up is the features that are missing in the driver set or they need changing. So we'll go over this. First of all, there's no undervolting. There's no manual cross communication with MSI Afterburn as well. So you cannot use this program to undervolt or um, underclock your Arc A750 or for that matter, overclock it either. So that's something I'd like to see changed. I'd like to see that option added in because undervolting is extremely good. I get a lot of use out of it personally. When I sell PCs, I ask people too, do you want me to undervolt the GPU? And they're almost like, yep, yeah, please undervolt it. Basically what it does is it lets your GPU run at a lot lower temperatures as well as a lot lower power consumption. And you still get pretty much the same FPS if you can tune it right. So for me, that's a big one. I'd like to see that added in. And then we've got here, no low latency mode or FPS pre-rendering options that are available in AMD and Nvidia's driver options. This can essentially be a great thing for competitive gamers or people who want to snap on their desktop as fast as possible. Uh, the next one here is no resolution upscaling like DSR for Nvidia or a super resolution for AMD. So if you've got a 1080p monitor and a say a 1440p monitor, but you wanna make the 1080p 1440p for a dual monitor smooth setup. You can't do that on the Intel uh, Arc GPUs as of yet. Then we've got the message pop-ups in the bottom right hand corner. Once is enough for the error messages. They just keep popping up every time you either turn on the PC or it resumes from sleep. 
like to see this fixed too. And that's about all I could find in the two weeks that I spent with the Intel Arc GPUs because I had a break last month from YouTube a little bit with Diablo 4 especially. I tested it on a lot of different uh, hardware configurations, GPUs, just to see what the stability was like on the new cards, especially from Intel, because I really wanted to give it a thorough run before I made a recommendation. And as I'm testing these GPUs out, I'm thinking, wow, for nine months in the making, there is a lot wrong with these GPUs to the point where I cannot recommend them to someone who wants to get a really smooth experience on PC. And so the other biggest factor here that's why Intel would want to fix this as soon as possible is PC retailers. People selling uh, graphics cards in pre-built PCs, they do not want driver issues. They do not want problems when they're selling that PC because once the customer buys it and they're playing games and things are crashing, they're gonna come back to the PC store and go, uh, why is this PC crashing? It's faulty. When the PC itself, the hardware, is not faulty at all, but it's all the driver's fault. And so that's why driver stability is so important when it comes to PC gaming. It's not just the whole end user experience, it's the whole ecosystem depends on stability. So love to see Intel fix these things up, but nine months in the making, as I said just before, it's a shame to see this many problems still existing with the driver set. And I'm going to assume here that it is the driver set. Though the worst of all this is this is just what one man has personally found with benchmarking and testing the card. There is probably a heap of other problems out there with these GPUs that are still to either yet be reported or people are reporting them and they're just not getting through to Intel. So Intel, your driver team has a lot of work cut out for it to catch up. Where my driver problems when it comes to Nvidia and AMD are usually just nuances and they're patched pretty quickly. And in fact, on that note, I will put in here, AMD's drivers in the last six months have become really good, at least from the testing I was doing here with the RX 7600, both on review day and on playing it in the last two weeks. I was really surprised. AMD's uh, RDNA 3 drivers are doing really well. I could make a separate video on that with all the findings there because I think AMD is doing extremely well now in terms of being competitive, and it's good to see that. But Intel, I really want to see you do more with this drivers, get all these problems fixed up ASAP and become that true third competitor. Because as it stands, I would love to support the newcomer, the guy who's the underdog. I always love supporting that in pretty much any field when it comes to buying products. But at the same time, it has to be justified. And I just can't justify at this point in time, recommending someone, especially on a budget and saving their money hard, to go out and buy one of these GPUs, knowing that they could experience the huge list of problems that I've just listed here in today's video. Anyway guys, today's video, uh, that's why I do the parts hunts, because the parts hunts keep me really positive, keeps me really happy about PC gaming. Then I get on to like new parts, and a lot of the times with new parts, it's either you're being a beta tester, in this case, more like an alpha tester, and you just like, it sort of gets you down. You wanna stay positive, you want to keep doing things that make you happy and laugh. And sorry if this video didn't make you happy or laugh. I've got to try and get back to that like we were doing in the previous video of the parts hunt. So that's one thing I definitely want to focus on because I, I realized I spoke to one of my friends over the weekend. I'm like, you know, I, I just want to have more fun with YouTube. And that's what I was doing when I first got into my used PC builds. I was just having fun all the time with the content and you guys were loving it too. And so I wanna get back to that, but I feel at the same time, I just have to let people know that this is what Arc's like. And for me personally, I bought these cards in Taiwan for really good prices. The Arc was about 190 USD. The, uh, the eight gigabyte model, the 750, the 770 was about 300 and something, the 16 gig model. And to be honest, I'm probably just gonna reflip them here locally, just the GPUs on the market, and then come back to them maybe in six months, I'll pick up an Arc A750 and see if the driver experience is a lot better. But in that time, it's just wow. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that the drivers nine months on are this bad. Uh, anyway, guys, do let us know in the comment section below what's your thoughts and opinions on Intel Arc. Have you got a GPU personally from them? Is it in your main rig as well? And what's your experience been like? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. 
just like this question of the day here, which comes from Darox. And they ask, is a computer glasses a waste of money or does it help to sleep better and to relax your eyes? And they're talking about the blue light glasses, I'm assuming here, where if you get a pair of these and they're a proper pair, they can definitely help you uh, block out blue light which if you guys didn't know, a lot of monitors, especially the white LED monitors, they push out a lot of blue light. So they can definitely help relax your eyes, especially at nighttime. I would say a good measure is to, when the sun goes down, try and eliminate as much blue light as possible. And ways you can do that is blue light glasses, as well as putting on a program, or in case of Windows, just putting on Windows night light and making it pretty strong. And of course, on your smartphone, putting on the strong uh, nightlight settings on your smartphone as well as in your house. You may wish to think about changing white LEDs too as they emit a lot of blue light and that can mess with your melatonin production essentially. Though with blue light glasses, if you're going to get some, do get a really comfortable pair. That's pretty much the reason why I stopped wearing mine. They just weren't that comfortable in the long term as well as the fact that when I use my PC at night now, I do use that blue light filter at a pretty strong setting too and that hasn't been a problem for me uh, personally. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you made it this far and you're enjoying that content, be sure to hit that like button and ring that bell after you hit the sub button. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.